Things are going from bad to worse in the third installment of the John Wick series, and now there's a $14 million global contract on John's head, putting him in the crosshairs of an eager army of the world's top assassins. But do you remember how he got here? How about a quick summary? How does that sound? That sounds perfect. All right then, here's the John Wick series in five minutes. Spoiler alert. And away we go. John Wick has just lost his wife Helen to a terminal illness, and as a final gift, Helen has arranged for a beagle puppy to be delivered to John following her funeral. While cruising with his new dog Daisy, a Russian jerkweed insists on buying John's Mustang, but John says she's not for sale. Insulted, the Russian and his crew bust into John's house that night to steal the car, beating John to a pulp and deliberately, callously, and heartlessly killing Daisy in the process. At a chop shop run by Aurelio, an old friend of John's, John is told the man who took his car is Yosef Tarasov, who John realizes is the son of Vigo Tarasov. Aurelio punched Yosef and kicked him out of his garage when he recognized the car. Aurelio later justifies his actions to Vigo. Because he stole John Wick's car, sir, and uh, killed his dog. Oh. Vigo tells his deadbeat son just who it was he crossed, and we learn John used to work for Vigo. We also learn John asked to leave the Tarasovs after falling in love with Helen, and for that privilege, Vigo assigned him an impossible task, which John completed, putting the Tarasovs on the map in New York City. Vigo has a dozen men sent to John's house, but John kills them all. So Vigo puts a $2 million bounty on John. John heads to the city to stay at the Continental, a hotel for the criminal underworld that has a strict policy forbidding killing on hotel grounds. John learns from the manager Winston that Yosef is at a nightclub called the Red Circle. John slaughters his way through the Red Circle but doesn't get to Yosef and returns to the Continental to get patched up. How good's your laundry? No one's that good. An assassin named Perkins sneaks into John's room to kill him, but John is alerted to the danger by his old friend Marcus. John prevails against Perkins and learns Vigo has a vault in a church in Little Russia. John leaves Perkins with a fellow assassin named Harry and heads to Vigo's stash and destroys it. Though Perkins escapes and kills Harry at the Continental. When Vigo is lured to Little Russia by John's actions, John ambushes him. But he's knocked down and Vigo captures him for a spot of monologuing. It was just a f***ing car, just a f***ing dog. John is saved again by Marcus, freeing John to compel Vigo to give up his son. Vigo tells John where to find him, and John kills Yosef. Perkins rats out Marcus, who Vigo murders for helping John instead of killing him. But shortly afterwards, Winston has Perkins executed for killing Harry on Continental premises. Winston tells John Vigo is escaping via helicopter, and John is able to wipe out Vigo's remaining henchmen and kill Vigo. John breaks into an animal clinic to get some first aid, and upon leaving, he takes a dog he noticed was due to be euthanized. Let's go. A few days later, John has found his Mustang at a facility run by Vigo's brother, Abraham. The car is heavily damaged in the following fight, but John calls a truce with Abraham in an attempt to return to retirement. After Aurelio picks up the car for repairs, John is visited by an Italian Camorra boss, Santino D'Antonio, who we learn helped John on the night of his impossible task. In return, John was bound to a marker, and for a man to grant a marker to another is to bind a soul to a blood oath. John refuses to serve out the favor, saying he's not that guy anymore. Santino blows up John's house for rejecting him, but the dog survives. John visits the Continental where he's berated by Winston for indebting himself to a turd like Santino and reminded he really has no choice. Every marker must be honored. John goes to meet Santino, who wants his sister Gianna dead so he can inherit his father's seat at the High Table, a secret association of the world's highest ranking organized crime kingpins. John heads to the Continental Hotel in Rome, tools up, and sneaks into the D'Antonio estate to kill Gianna. During his escape, John is attacked by both Gianna's bodyguard Cassian, as well as Santino's own trigger woman Ares and her crew. Santino sees John as a loose end. John's brawl with Cassian is stopped when they crash into the Continental. Gentlemen! Santino opens a $7 million contract on John, resulting in every hitman in New York City gunning for John upon his return from Italy. John is forced to fight his way through the city, including a rematch with Cassian, who he wounds but leaves alive. Hurt again, John seeks the aid of an enigmatic crime lord called the Bowery King, who agrees to help John despite the enormous bounty on his head. Get this man a gun. 
John slays his way through Santino's guards, Ares included, but Santino retreats to the Continental, smugly thinking he's safe from John. Despite Winston's warnings, John plugs Santino in the head right in the middle of the lounge. John retrieves his dog and leaves, but he's summoned back to the city by Winston, who explains that the Kimura have doubled the price on his head and the contract has gone international. He also declares John excommunicado from the Continental, but he gives John a marker and a one-hour head start. Whoever comes, whoever it is, I'll kill them. I'll kill them all. Of course you will. For more movie summaries and less time than it takes to make a sandwich, be sure to check out IGN's Matrix Trilogy in 6 minutes and our rundown of the Mission Impossible series. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you'd like to watch IGN. Oh.